So I did a couple of videos last year. This is Carl, and and he does KB Mason B houses. So last year we touched on a few things, and we're going to kind of follow up with that this year for you enthusiasts that really care about Mason B and the importance of it. So hello, Carl. Hey, how are you doing? Nice with you again. I'm doing well, and I appreciate you coming on. And, and talking to people that love hearing about, you know, the, the importance um, of garden practices and today specifically Mason so Bees. Absolutely. So, a couple, I, I told you before we went on here, I wanted to touch on things I didn't touch on last time. So, first and foremost, why Mason Bees? You know, what's the importance and value and why should people have an interest in that? Well, there's a couple of issues here. And when Let's say the word B, and everyone kind of gets excited, and sometimes they step, step back and they are not very informed about bees. When people think of bees, they think of honeybees and or stings. But we should be aware that there are many, many varieties of bees in the United States that are natives, and we should support them all. Honeybees are great. We need them as pollinators. We need them as honey producers. But there's also other species of bees that we need, and they're very important. Whether they're mason bees, leaf cutter bees, other bees, they're all pollinators in some aspect. Now we like the mason bees because they are super pollinators. As a honeybee, will, they will hit maybe 50 to 75 flowers a day, and they will land on the petal working into the stamen to get the pollen and the nectar. But a honey, but a mason bee, they have such a hairy body that they land right on top of the flower and collect as much pollen on their body to bring in to produce a uh, pollen ball to feed their young, their egg that she's going to drop on it. Now that's very important. Again, a honey bee will hit 50 to 75 flowers a day, but a mason bee because there is no queen to support, she will hit 1,200 to 1,500 blossoms a day, which means that's a lot of pollen. And they need to make a ball of pollen about the size of a pencil eraser for each egg that she lays. And that's pretty massive. It is. Yep. It is. Wow. So, next question. When's, when does this all begin in your garden? In the, and what's the timing on that? Well... Paul, uh, mason bees are short, short season bees, and they are spring bees. They'll, they're the earliest bees to emerge in the springtime. Usually, they say about mid March, but you have to be careful and watch weather in your area, which is specific, uh, because you may live in an area that's taller or in a valley. You may be colder or warmer than your neighbor. Uh, watch the weather. That's as important in raising these bees as watching your plants to make sure that they blossom on time so when the bees do emerge, they have something to eat. Okay, yep. so food source is key. Food source is key, and the weather is key. Uh, here in Oregon, we've had some interesting weather uh, where March was very cold. We've had some snow and very cold weather into April, even into late April, where where the bees, the mason bees, were still in their cocoons. They could not emerge because it was so cold, and there was no blossoms for them to eat or to get the, get the pollen from. So that's something to be careful and to watch. So are they you're going to say isolated? Can they become killed because of the cold weather and they don't emerge? They do not emerge uh, because they only have so much food source left in their cocoons to survive over winter. Uh, yes, uh, so that's that's something to consider uh, when, you're, when you're holding mm -hmm. the cocoons in the refrigerator. Okay, okay. So, a big thing that is important for me is organic garden. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, your soil, you know, the preventatives, you know, people use, you know, synthetics and different things. That affects bees. Absolutely, because the plant will get all the soil, the soil, and the flower of the plant, and that's where the 
bees get their pollen. So uh, that's why we like organics, and we have to be careful of anything that we put in our soil. And be aware of it. Look at your sources. You look at the growers who are doing it. Talk to them. Information is key. Absolutely. So, and thank you for that because, you know, people don't realize the cleaner the garden, the cleaner all the environment that's interacting and relying on the garden with what we put in it and how we use it. So, here's our brand new little house, Carl. So, somebody, and by the way, I'll link the website, Carl, onto this video. Here's our brand new house. How do we fill it? Where do we get them? Okay. If you don't already have cocoons, uh, there are source of cocoons. We'd like to get loose cocoons, nothing that's in a straw or in a tube, because we can't see what those cocoons are like. Sure, there may be a tube or straw or container may be full, but we cannot look at the health of them. There may be some unviable or um, cocoons that were not developed. Uh, or there might be parasites in there or a fungus. That's something we can't see from the outside. It has to go inside. And that's why we like loose or wash cocoons because then we'll know the health of them. Those loose cocoons will turn the house upside down, easily pour them into the attic, set up, and they're ready to go. The, the cocoons stay in the back where they are not uh, available to the birds who would like to eat them. So they're safe back there. They'll wait for the right temperature to emerge. Then they'll emerge. The males will emerge first. They will basically poo on the house. And what they are doing is they are marking their territory, but that's also a natural pheromone to attract females once she chews out of her side. Interesting. So then they're going to fill these ports. Do you want, As they're going do you want out and doing those things. things. Yes. And when is the end of the season? When does that more or less come okay. to an end? Now the female, she'll carry up to 35 eggs. Uh, maybe sometimes 27, maybe 30. But once she lays yeah, we her eggs, oh, yeah, we've already, we've already. then she'll die off. We so right that's there. why it's we're a spring bee. 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 Okay, so mid-March to mid-June. But again, <laughs> it's, weather, it's weather important. So watch your weather. It may not start March 15th, as the calendar says. It may March. It may start late April, which means the season will go later into June, possibly early July. So again, it's important to watch your weather. Okay. So it's it's filled. The cocoon. Let's see to take this little out. is a ball of pollen with nothing else in here, which means the egg that had been dropped on the pollen ball is not viable. It means it hasn't been fertilized correctly and it is not, will not grow into a bee. But when she lays her eggs, it doesn't matter. She has laid that egg and she keeps moving forward until she fills that slot. But when the next egg, she's busy. And when she fills that slot, she will move on to another spot to fill until she drops all her eggs. Okay, so when do I scrape this out and what do I do with it once I take it out of there? Okay, these, these eggs will soon turn into larvae as they are eating the pollen, turn into bees, and then start spinning cocoon around themselves for overwintering. They will take any excess pollen into the cocoon with them to help uh, give them food as they're overwintering. Why they're in here? Absolutely. Okay. Now they're safe in here because they're in that cocoon, and the cocoon, as delicate as it looks, it is very sturdy. Um, it can withstand a lot of issues, uh, except possibly some of the uh, parasitic wasps that will drill into it and try to kill the uh, larvae in there. Wow! Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. That's that's the key thing. Why you will watch your house, wherever, whatever kind of bee house you have, Mason bee house especially. Um, 
we usually look at after the 4th of July of covering the front of this so that you don't get any more predators in here, whether it's a flicker or woodpecker or any birds who would want to pick this out and looking for food or any other wasps or invasives that would want to uh, occupy any slots that are unused because they weren't filled by the mason bees. Okay. So we want to protect this with some kind of cover for the rest of the season until it's time to harvest them around December, January. Actually, you could do it any time after Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. So I'm going to leave these in here to yep. say Thanksgiving yes. dinner. Then I'm going to pull them out. Yes. What am I going to do with them? Where am I going to put them? Well, we suggest that you clean them out in our instructions. Each, each house comes with instructions that tells you exactly how to clean them out. It also tells you how to reload them with the cocoons and where to set your house out. Okay. But in cleaning them, we use water that has a couple of capfuls of bleach. Two gallons plus a couple of capfuls. Now, that will not hurt the cocoon. They are quite unique in that aspect. The water will soften the mud. Okay. It will soften the mud, and you'll use your stick, and that will pop the cocoons out. Okay. They will, they will float to the surface, and you can scoop them up with a sieve and wash as much dirt off of them as possible. Wow. So right yeah. into the water. Right into the water. They float, and you can also, once they come out of the bleach water, you can put them in some uh, just clean water just to wash off any excess that you might think is uh, harmful to them. But that bleach water will kill the mi any mites, any or fungus that are in the wood blocks or on the cocoons themselves, which is which is keeps them healthy, healthy for next year. Right. Absolutely. So okay, now what do I do with them? They're all nice, clean, and tidy. Yes. They're all cleaned up. Keep your blocks out and let them dry out for the rest of the season. Okay. Do not do not put them back in until the springtime. Now, your cocoons will be, once you wash them, take them out of that water, bleach water and or clear water, and uh, as soon as you've got all the dirt off, put them on a towel to wick off any excess water. Okay. If, as you look at them or try to separate them from males or females, if you're interested in knowing exactly uh, what kind of cocoons you're getting, uh, some people do count on like they're looking for more females than males. You can also use a stick to pick off any excess mud that's stuck to the cocoon or grass that didn't come off as you were washing in the water. Okay, because they're durable enough that you can do that. Once once they're on the uh, towel and you're satisfied that they wicked enough water off, put them in the container and put them in the fridge. The fridge has the correct temperature uh, to keep them nice and comfortable because they are a dormant insect, just like a... Uh, Ladybug, because they're dormant and they, they stay calm and they will just do fine in the fridge. The fridge has a constant temperature between 36 and 38 degrees and the, the bees need a higher temperature to start waking up. So in the springtime, when we're ready, that's when we put the house back together. And then, again, we're watching our weather to make sure where we put it out. Um, if it comes out too early and, you know, you suddenly get 56 degrees or 60 degree weather and you think, oh, it's just right. But then two days later, it drops down to 45. Oh, be careful. Watch the weather. You know, do a 10-day or a you know, two-week if you can look far enough ahead. And also watch your plants to see, are there anything blooming? I have not got any pollen coming out, any blossoms. That's important. If they emerge without any food, uh, that's not very good because they'll go elsewhere hunting for food trying to survive so that is key that is key so i know myself personally you know since i've been running mason bees on my property yeah i got my fruit production you know within my garden itself just increased dramatically let us know how you're doing you know after a couple years and my wife and i noticed like wow what change thank you of course you know like click down and out of the mason bees you know, they're so helpful and beneficial to your garden. Absolutely. For all so many right reasons. Absolutely. And they are docile. You know, they don't sting. The female does have a stinger, 
although you'd have to hold it in your hand, almost crushing it to be able to have it sting you. Wow. And they are fun to watch. Wow. Because you can hang these at eye level and watch them. They come in like an air, airport because they are busy bees. I remember that, so yes. Yep. In and out, in and out. So, your new pets, Mason Bees. Absolutely. Carl, I appreciate your time. And KB Mason Bees, I'm going to link his website and all the information you need. And you can go on to YouTube and other venues, you know, to research Mason Bees, the importance. You know, we appreciate Carl. You really broke this down well for me, even again, and for people that are curious about farming their Mason Bees. But it's really inexpensive. And... I, I guess lastly, where would you purchase mason bees in your opinion? Where is going to be your best resource you know, to start this up? That's interesting. Some farm stores, some nurseries have them in stock. Not all of them. I would call them and check first with them. But also, you know, maybe there's a gardening forum on your Facebook page or any garden blogs. Oh. Uh, sometimes there's neighborhood people that have extra bees. Check it out. You know, or contact friends. They may know somebody and you could get extra bees if you need them. Or spread the word that, hey, this is great, this is something that your garden will love, it's easy to take care of, and it's beneficial to all your plants, your neighbor's plants, since the bees go 300 feet in all directions. Wow, wow. And they're gonna keep in the fridge till you start up till your year. Till your neck, yep. And it's easy, maybe an hour, hour and a half a year of maintenance for cleaning and getting it ready for the next season. Yep. Oh, there you go. You love organics. Love your garden, and you want to take care of the environment. Yeah, we love our mason bees. That's a good way to maintain it. Thank you very much. So thank you, Carl. You betcha. We appreciate your time. Okay. Perfect. That's all we needed, my brother.